Hi guys, welcome to the year end special where we look back at some of my favorite films of the year. In the last video, we covered my favorite Hindi films of the year, and this video, we will talk about my favorite regional films of the year. It won't be an overstatement if I say that in the last two years, regional cinema has overtaken Hindi cinema both in terms of pure quality and innovation. While serious cinema goers always knew the potential of regional cinema, the mass audience shift to regional content was primarily triggered by the unprecedented success of S.S. Rajmouli's Bahubali, whose iconic imagery captured the imagination of the entire nation. In the highest grossing movies of all time in India, Bahubali 2 is ranked number one. In fact, in the top five, there are two regional films. One is Bahubali 2 and the other is Robot 2.0. Today, if there is a Malayalam, Telugu or Tamil cinema coming out, it is discussed in mainstream circles, reviewed by mainstream critics. And the film stars and directors of the South are slowly becoming household names. If 2020 was good, then 2021 was even better. I had a tough time. I had a really tough time selecting the top five in the regional cinema category. So many good movies had to be left out. Like the fantastic Karnan starring Dhanush or Liju Joseph's deliciously trippy Churili and Simbu's wickedly twisted Manado. Sadly, none of these make the list. If it was another year, these three would have been the top three. So what makes it to the list? Let's find out. So at number 5 is Drishyam 2, a follow-up to the highly successful Drishyam. This movie was a worthy sequel to the original. Director Jitu Joseph's command over these characters and his ability to surprise and keep the viewers at the edge of the seat is remarkable. The fact that he was able to invoke the same tension in his viewers as he did in the first film is testament to the man's talent and storytelling ability. I guess with someone like a Mohan Lal at the helm of affairs, that job's become a tad bit more easier. I also have a soft corner for this movie because that review of Drishyam 2 is my highest watched and most liked video in all my timeline. You can check that review in this link. At number 4 is Mandela, a film made by rank newcomers, a new director in Ashwin, a relatively new production company and a bunch of unknown actors. The movie tickles us with its humor which is seeped in reality, all the while tapping into our innate need of rooting for the underdog. The story of a backward class village fool who is despised by everyone. He's the designated barber, but he's often thrown around and expected to do everyone's dirty work. But come election, he becomes the center of everyone's affection. Why? Because apparently his vote is the only vote that will decide which party wins. Now that situation has so much humor potential built into it. It means that it's made of And the makers do full justice to it, choosing out every little joke possible. But the reason why this makes to my list is because it's much more than a comedy. It is in fact making a very clear statement about various aspects in our society. At its center though, it's about a man finding his identity and doing good by it. The acting too is on point. I remember having a blast watching this one. Number 3, Joji. Joji is the coming together of seasoned pros of Malayalam cinema. Fahad Fazal, Sham Pushkaran and Dilesh Pothar. The previous two films, Mahesh and Padigaram and Toddu Muttalam Drikshashim are two landmark films in Malayalam cinema. So the third time when they came together, everyone expected a great film. And guess what? They got one. Right at the outset, you don't know what kind of film this is. Because the movie takes its time establishing the household, its members and their hierarchy very clearly. But this hierarchy is also evident visually. The physically towering Kutapan is the domineering patriarch, followed by his eldest son Jaimun, played brilliantly by Baburaj. Somewhere on the bottom is Apna Joji. His laziness is actually a rebellion towards his resentment for the hierarchy. Of all the versions of Meg that, that you have seen on silver screen, he is the unlikeliest. Pafa is perhaps the only actor in India today who has the acting chops to full off something like this. Number two is The Great Indian Kitchen. This is the third Malala movie in my list. You can understand the sheer dominance that this industry has. The Great Indian Kitchen was the movie that was rejected by Amazon, Netflix and Hotstar. And then it somehow found release on a rather unknown website called Kneestream. But as they say, you can't keep a good thing hidden for long. The word of mouth for this film started generating so much buzz that there was a point where the subscriptions for Neestream started getting more than what they can manage. So what made The Great Indian Kitchen so special? Well, it's a unique film. A film that looks inconspicuous but packs a sting. It's a story about a woman who after marriage walks into this household where she has to adjust quickly to the burden of expectations. 
It's a short 100 minute film with only 30 minutes of dialogue. The movie is just an observation of the journey of this woman. A woman who is in this domestic prison of sorts. From willingness to irritation, from irritation to frustration, and from frustration to her eventual breakdown, and finally to her liberation. Now the choice of writer-director Geo Bibi to just place the camera without suggesting or implying anything and let you, the viewer, just realize the sheer imbalance between the genders is the stuff of genius. For me, undeniably, this was the most uncomfortable film to watch as a man with family. Because chances are you might have encountered something like this or a version of this playing out in your family or extended family. It's a must watch. Which brings me to my favorite regional film of the year, The Disciple. This Marathi film was the first Indian film to be invited to enter the main competition in the Venice Film Festival. The last Indian movie was Monsoon Valley. The Disciple won both the International Critics Award as well as the best screenplay in this film festival. It's a pretty big deal. But I guess most of you might not have heard of this Chaitanya Tamani's masterpiece. Why? Because it's not a commercial film and it's not backed by a studio. In fact, it's the exact opposite of a commercial film. Neither the story, or the way it's edited, or even the way it's shot resembles anything commercial. It's a movie that's not made to sell, if you know what I mean. Chaitanya's film is almost like a meditation. The stillness and the depth that he's able to achieve is astounding. You can catch my detailed review of the film in the link above. So that's it. Those were my favorite regional films of the year. This was a tough one. I had to leave out a few, but I'm happy. Here's hoping that the next year is as good as this year for regional cinema. So what did you think of my list? What was your favorite regional film of the year? Was it covered in this? Was it something else? Please mention that in the comment section. I would love to hear it. The next video will be my favorite English films of the year. Stay tuned.